channel Honey Eats, it's your girl Honey, and today I'm gonna be eating shabu shabu, so let's get started. Today I'm going to do the Confessions of a Honey Bee series, and those of you who are new to my channel, first of all, welcome to my channel, and welcome to being a Honey Bee! Yay! So I wanted to first explain what is Confessions of a Honey Bee. My Honey Bees, my subscribers, send me confessions that they want to confess and want to share their story. Basically, I read it off the emails that you guys send me and kind of show you guys my reaction and my opinion on your situation. So if you guys want to participate in this Confessions of a Honey Bee series, please send your confessions to honeyeats at gmail.com and let's get started because I'm so hungry. So let's put in the veggies first because it's gonna take a while for them to cook. And as you can see, I have half and half. I put in kelp and this part is going to be for those of you who eat everything. And then this part, I kind of wanted to do like a vegan mukbang sort of for you guys who are vegan. So I'm just gonna put in veggies in here. So let's put in half. <laughs> Ta-da! So let's start with confession number one. These are your confessions. One night, my boyfriend, now ex, texted me at 3 a.m. telling me that he was having a panic attack. He told me that he was going to come over so I can comfort him. But the thing is, my parents are strict when it comes to who I'm dating and they don't know I was in a relationship. He got to my place at 4 a.m., so an hour after, but my aunt and uncle were in the kitchen. I stayed in my room for half an hour until they left, and once they left, I snuck my boyfriend into the house. Naughty, naughty, naughty. We went into an empty room and we laid in the bed to cuddle. Next thing you know, we're both completely naked. Okay, we know where this story is gonna go. But at 7 a.m., my mom went into my room and didn't see me in bed, so she decided to check in the empty room, which I locked. She went to the front door and saw my boyfriend's shoes. I heard her talking to my uncle about the shoes and I woke up my boyfriend from his nap. My heart was racing and I was in tears. I told him, babe, my mom knows. She knows you're here, hide. There was no place to hide so I told him to put on his clothes. I was having an anxiety attack as I heard my mom walk towards the room. Babe, what do I do? My mom is going to kill me or kick me out of the house. I'm not going to have a place to stay. What do I do? He looked at me while continuing to get dressed and said, I don't know. Wow. My mom knocked on the door and I froze. Open the door. Open the door now. I opened the door a minute later, my boyfriend standing next to me. You could see the anger in my mom's eyes. She kicked him out and told my entire family what happened. The dynamic between me and my boyfriend changed a lot. We broke up a couple of days after the incident. Oh my gosh, I cannot imagine how you must have felt at this situation because I've never been in a situation like this. And I know I wasn't eating while I was telling this confession because I'm still waiting for the veggies to cook. But wow, I think if this happened to me, my parents would have seriously kicked me out of the house and never talked to me again and disowned me. I know my parents would have disowned me. Well, even though the bok choy isn't too well done, I'm gonna take a bite out of this and dip this in the goma sauce. Mmm. So what happened between you and your mom after this? I know the dynamic between you and your boyfriend changed a lot, but what about between you and your mom? That is my question. But thank you so much for sharing the story and I know it must have been really hard for you after what happened, especially like facing your family. 
I don't think I would be able to look them in the eyes after this incident. I don't know. I'm so sorry that this happened to you. I know it was because you guys were so much in love and you probably couldn't help it. It sucks that in the end you guys broke up, but it is what it is, right? Thank you so much for sharing. Confession number two. Last Saturday, well, this wasn't really last Saturday, but this is what this person wrote. Last Saturday, I went on a date with a guy that wasn't the first date. I went on so many dates with him already, and we have considered each other as a girlfriend and boyfriend, although he hasn't asked me, do you want to be my girlfriend? Because I don't think it's necessary. So let me tell you a story about this one night. He was dropping me off in front of my house and I know that this will be the night that he kissed me. I already got the feeling from when he picked me up. Weird, right? But honestly, I feel like sometimes we do have that feeling where it's gonna go further than like before, like the skinship. So I understand what you're saying. It was my first kiss, and I think it's a little bit weird, actually. After he kissed me, I went into my house, and I was overthinking about that night. My heart keeps on racing, and it won't stop until my head's turning dizzy. And I kept thinking after that kiss, he may be done with me and left, because I do have bad experience with boys. But everything turned out to be alright now, and I told him about what happened after he kissed me, and he stayed supportive with me. He said he understands and he keeps apologizing about what happened. My heart tells me that I do love him and it's okay. I think he's a keeper, honey, and that's awesome. So that's my confession about my first kiss. First of all, congratulations. You guys are basically official now, right? And I kind of remember my first kiss and kind of don't, but I remember it was a good one. Um, sometimes I know with guys, if they feel like they got the girl, then they kind of turn cold. I mean, that has happened to me once and, you know, I know why you were a little bit insecure about losing him. But the only thing that matters is that you got him. And you guys are official now. And I hope you guys last a long time and maybe get married too who knows right good for you I'm so happy thank you so much for sharing see how it's raw shake 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 since it's beef it doesn't have to be too well done so even though there's a little bit of pink in here it's fine ta-da shake shake done Put it in my ponzu sauce. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Let's eat the vegan side. Hi, vegans! <laughs> Bok choy. This one's a really short one. When I was 11, I ate one of my dad's special desserts. You guys know what that is, right? I knew we weren't allowed to touch them, but they were so good. When he got home, he asked who ate it, and everyone denied it, including me. The questioning went on for hours, and no one found out who it was, and we all got in trouble for it. Okay, first of all, I want to know how you felt after you ate this special dessert. The special dessert is what I'm thinking about, right? What everyone's thinking about. The law that passed not too long ago in California, right? 
It has to do with some something with that, right? The special desserts. <laughs> If you want, you can email me and let me know how it was. So I was on a date with this guy I really, really, really freaking liked. So we went to this Chinese slash Hong Kong restaurant. We placed our orders and the waiter brought us a soup. Now before I continue, me and my date are gay. So anyways, moving on. When the soup arrived, I noticed that the soup had no color. It was just plain bland soup. When I grabbed the spoon to start drinking some of the soup, I noticed some of the customers and staffs looking at our table. And me being paranoid, I quickly assumed it was because we were a gay couple. So when I started to drink some of the soup, it didn't taste like anything. It was like water. So me being confused plus my date looking weirdly at me, I looked around and found out. What do you think he found out? Comment below. This is confession four, right? Put confession four and then comment below what you guys think happened to this guy. Why was everyone staring at him weird? Ready? That the soup wasn't actually soup. The soup wasn't actually soup. It was just warm water to wash your hands in. Do you guys know in some restaurants, especially in China or like, you know, Chinese uh, restaurants, they give you water, warm water to wash your hands in, especially when you're eating like seafood, like crab or lobster or something like that, to just, you know, sanitize your hands. So this was the soup. He was supposed to wash his hands in. I got so embarrassed, I ran out of the restaurant and never contacted the guy ever again. Oh my gosh, that is like the worst first date ever. I'm so sorry that this happened to you, but honestly, when I first moved to Taiwan, they gave you a lot of this like washing hand water, right? Luckily, we were with our dad's company people, so they were like, Oh, oh, make sure you don't uh, drink that water. It's for your hands. And we were like, what, really? Oh, okay. And then we like dunk our hands in there and copied what they were doing. So, you know, you're not alone here. I didn't know what that hot water was for either or warm water. But I'm so sorry that the date didn't work out. I just cannot wait till these veggies are done. So I'm just going to eat it right now. Taking forever. Next confession. So this was like two years ago. I am now 18. It was my first time flying to Saudi Arabia alone. So I was really, really careful not to break any rules or whatnot. Anyways, I was about to pass by the luggage checkup where they check for weight and stuff to make sure your luggage isn't overweight. And I found out that the hand carry was only supposed to be 8 kilograms. And my hand carry was like 13 since it had like five heavy leather jackets and two sweaters. So genius me thought of a bright idea to just simply wear them all. When I got to the boarding of the plane where they were frisking me, all the guards thought I had a bomb with me. I was so scared they would put me to jail so I cried. Just imagine a chubby 16 year old wearing two sweaters and five leather jackets crying on a plane. Yeah, never gonna do that again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow, I cannot believe you wore all those clothes and they thought it was a bomb, but I can totally tell you're a fashionista. Leather jackets, you know what's up, but wow, I'm so, I'm like shocked right now. But you learned your lesson, right? As long as you learned your lesson and you know how much to carry in your, in your carry on, you're fine. But thank you so much for sharing your story. It was so interesting. I know it would have sucked if it happened to me. And I know it sucked that it did happen to you. But something worth sharing, right? Confessions of a honeybee.
I gotta eat because I'm like so hungry. While I'm shaking, let's move on to the next confession. Once when I was younger, I lost sight of my dad in a restaurant. And then I saw a bald man walking in front of me and I assumed that he was my dad since my dad was also bald. So I ran up towards him and punched him directly in the gut. He turned out not being my dad and was definitely surprised to see a seven-year-old child jumping out at him and punching him right in the gut. I was super shy and embarrassed after I realized it wasn't my dad, so I ran off without even saying sorry. To top it all off, my dad ended up finding me and had to apologize to the man that I had punched and had to explain how it was just an accident. Well, I'm sure that other bald man that wasn't your dad, he understood because you're just like a little seven-year-old. Like, he probably thought it was cute, and it probably didn't hurt him that much at all, so, you know... I'm sure he wasn't too mad about it. But I had something like that happen to me too when I was little. When I was at a theme park. And I lost sight of my dad. So I like went to someone that looked like my dad, right? And I was like hugging his leg and it turned out it wasn't him. So I ran away. You're not alone. Thank you for sharing. So there was one time when I was 13, I had like a kind of boyfriend. We weren't dating or anything, but I was really in love with him. It was just that I had told him I was 16 and not 13. Wow. So one summer, we decided to meet and he still thought I was 13. Or I think she meant that he thought she was 16. Yeah, so he thought she was 16. He came from like four hours drive from where I was from, so I had to make a tent where he could sleep in. We were at a festival for all ages, of course, so I had to sleep in a tent too. But I didn't tell my parents that I was meeting him or anything, and I told them that I was sleeping at my then best friend's house, but I wasn't. I was sleeping with him in this tent. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Since he was 18, and I was thinking about it all the time, we didn't do anything like that to sleep in the same tent. Okay. So the morning after, I was awake, and I was sitting in his tent, and my mom went in the tent and said I had to get my ass the F out of there. Wow, I was right. What you gonna do when they come for you? And to make the discussion short, I got grounded. My best friend had told her mom where and who I was with because my dad called her mom and asked her if I was there and so on. I know this can be confusing. I hope you're still on the train. Yes, I am on the train. Are you guys on the train? Wow, some of you honeybees are intense. I don't know if I can keep up. Keeping up with my honeybees. <laughs> I feel like I should call this keeping up with my honeybees. I gotta keep up. Anyway, my mom told the boy if he didn't get out of here in less than 10 minutes, she would call the cops. Please, any of my other honeybees, please don't lie about your age. I seriously think it's just really dangerous and just wait till you turn into an adult. You have to enjoy yourself as a kid, like... It doesn't last long, but adulthood lasts forever, you know, after you turn 18 or 21. So please enjoy your childhood, enjoy your young self, and don't lie about your age, please. Okay? But thank you so much for sharing. I know you, you know, it's hard to tell a lot of your friends about this. You know, sometimes you just want to get it out. And that's what Confessions of a Honeybee is for. 
I got you. I'm gonna take a break from reading the confessions so I can eat a little. Some of you guys ask me, why do you look so oily, honey? Why? Just why? Is it your highlighter or your oily face? Well, I have these two lights in front of me so that you guys can see me through the camera and you guys can see my face and my food. So, that's basically why I look so oily, but today, I might be a little bit oily because right now it is like really hot in here because of the shabu shabu. So hot. dunk it all how many of you guys have tried shabu shabu I love shabu shabu one of my favorite foods actually I really really like sukiyaki too sukiyaki is used by a different broth like so more of a soy sauce based broth where there's just, just water and kelp Some people put in like chili oil or some soy sauce just to put a little bit more flavor in it. But I like to keep it fresh and just put in a kelp. Are you guys like sitting down and like, Honey, can you read the next confession? Hello! It's really hard to read the confessions and eat at the same time. So I feel like I still have a lot of food left. For you vegan eaters, back with more. Right. Okay, next confession. I've been doing my makeup since I was 19, now I'm 22. Anyways, my stepsister in law was here at my house helping me get ready. For my husband's Christmas job party. Can you guys imagine what happened? As I was doing my makeup, she would want to help me do it, so I let her. First time using a beauty blender. If you guys don't know what that is, it's a sponge for your foundation. She did my makeup and I did my eyeliner. She said it was too thin, so I made it thicker. At the end, my husband came home and I was done with the makeup. He looked at me and said, my makeup looked like sh**. Low-key didn't know his stepsister did my makeup. Oh, no. So when she left, I opened the blinds to see how the makeup would look with the daylight. And oh my gosh. Too much makeup on and it looked cakey as F. I ended up taking all my makeup off and did my own makeup again before leaving. The next day, she said I looked beautiful and told everyone she did my makeup. So I went along with it, but my husband and I started laughing inside because we knew I did my makeup again. But I told her I loved it. Oh, that's so sweet of you. I mean, I would have done the same thing, honestly. 
because I would have felt bad. Is it wrong to not want to make her feel bad about not doing my makeup right? No, I don't think it's wrong at all. I think I would have told her the white lie as well. Unless, like, she wanted to, like, maybe pursue her career in makeup and she was, like, really bad at it. And you wanted to kind of tell her that she needs more practice. Then maybe, yeah, I would tell her the truth. But if not, I would just tell her that, you know, it looked amazing and it was beautiful. I think you did the right thing. This honeybee sent me some pictures, and she said I could share it with you guys. I think you did the right thing, so don't worry about it, and I just, I guess you know for next time that, you know, you're gonna do your own makeup for anything, <laughs> you know? But thank you so much for sharing. Alright, you guys, I'm getting a little impatient here, so I'm gonna dunk some salmon in here taking too long big chunk too go in there this is a deep dark confession according to my honeybee i was about 17 to 18 years old fresh out of high school and i started talking to this boy oh my gosh honey this guy was so gorgeous and amazing well things got intense between him and i and he eventually brought me home to meet his parents wow Fast forward to a month, he invited me over to his house. He was home alone. Really? So I went and the next thing you know, we're in his room and on his bed. I was not a virgin at the time. I had been with only one person before this guy. So things got hot. Like, really hot. We started to do the nasty and... And... Oh my gosh. Honey, this is what happened. The worst thing ever happened. So while we were doing the nasty, I... Farted. Oh my gosh, the feels, the feels. Most embarrassing thing ever. I could not believe myself. I farted during sex. Oh my gosh, I feel like crying for you, my honeybee. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I'm now 20 years old and I no longer talk to that guy. Well, can't guys be kind of understanding? It's like a natural thing. I mean, I know, maybe you couldn't really hold it in because you were, like, too deep into it, but come on, it's natural. It happens, you know, things happen in life. Well, I hope venting it out to me, you can get over it, right? And hopefully it'll never happen again. <laughs> But thank you so much for sharing. I know this is not the easiest thing to share. And I really, really appreciate you guys sharing like the deepest, darkest secrets and the deepest, dirtiest things that have happened to you because I seriously love reading them and sharing it also with my other honeybees. And I'm sure my other honeybees appreciate it too. I think my broccoli is done. I love cooked broccoli. It's so bomb.
Did you guys know that if you bite into food that's really, really, really hot, your two front teeth can fall off? Especially carrots and potatoes. So you have to really be careful when you eat them hot. Make sure it's not too hot before you bite into them. Or you're gonna be missing two front teeth. And you don't want that. I have a beautiful smile. My last few salmons. Dunk it. Next confession. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I was dating a guy from Utah. I'm from Cali. And my parents are the super duper strict Asian parents. And they would never ever let us go anywhere. I feel you, girl. My parents didn't allow me to visit him, so I decided to lie to my parents that I was going on a field trip with my leadership class to L.A. for four days and that we'll be taking a plane. Can you guys guess what happened? It was an amazing experience being bad and spending time with his family, and now we are engaged. Yay! I love you, honey. Thank you so much for sharing this story. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. And congratulations on your engagement. I'm really, really happy for you. Oh my gosh. I'm happy for what the future holds for you. And I wish you guys the best. I don't know if you guys ever tried this, but this came inside here and it's um, rice cakes. It's like this thin. Put it in. When I first tried it in Japan, I was like, what is this? Because it didn't taste like rice cakes and the texture wasn't like rice cakes at all. And they told me it was rice cakes. So I was like, what? Mind blown. Let's see. Oh, see, it's already melting. Look at, look at, look at, look at the texture. Oh my gosh. You see that? Oh my gosh. Yes. Mmm. It's like cheese, but better. Soft, stringy goodness. My worst experience is during secondary school. I liked a guy from my class and I was so stupid then to confess to him. Ever since he knew that I had a crush on him, he and his gang started to bully me. We are in the same FNN class, food and nutrition, and I was alone because I was not close with everyone. You know what? I think this happens a lot in middle school. Um, wait, secondary school is high school, but when we're younger, I think this happens a lot because the guys either don't want to admit that they like you back or they're just very immature. And the only way to handle the situation for guys is to attack you or just make fun of you. And I feel like that's what this guy did. And it was, of course, wrong of him to do that. But, um... They started to use words to hurt me, saying to me that I'm fat, ugly, and they throw things to hurt me. I cried many times because I couldn't handle it anymore. I tell my teacher he asked them to apologize. They did, but they didn't stop. And in fact, his other friends from the other class started to bully me. Things got worse. Finally, I graduated and I escaped from them. But when I see them outside, they still continue. What should I do? You know, luckily, you graduated and you won't be seeing them around every day. But as far as seeing them outside, all I can tell you is to ignore them. Don't give them any feedback. Don't talk to them. Don't talk back. But if anything, if anything, if it gets worse, I really hope that 
either your parents or someone could talk to his parents to really stop this because it's really unhealthy and you know it's not something that you should be going through you don't deserve it why just because you liked him he's gonna bully you not just even by himself but bring his friends along into this that just is so wrong Please stay strong, and if anything, you can email me and talk to me. I'm here for you. Just make sure that those kids don't bring you down. So hot. Woo. Thank you to all my honeybees for sending in your confessions. There are more confessions to come, so please stay tuned for the next Confessions of a Honeybees video. And if you do want to send in your confessions, please send them at honeyeats at gmail.com. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also to become a honey bee. And like this video if you guys liked it. And comment down below if you guys have any questions or comments. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye!